And let's see what happens next. So uh, seven. And we have limit of the nth root of f of x, of course, when x approaches a from either side. And n is also a positive integer. Positive integer. So what do you think? Can anyone guess? I think this light is not going to help here because there is a shadow on my hand now. So what do you think? Can anyone come up with an idea? Switch the operators. Right, it's the same thing. Swapping of the operators assuming the function is continuous. Very good. So limit of f of x, xx approaches a. We said that this was l. So then actually this is the nth root of l. Of course, if n is even, so if this is even, then f of x must be greater than or equal to 0. Okay, and I think the last two are, are sh shouldn't even be there, but um, so one is the limit of x as x approaches a from either side. Well, we said, how do I determine a limit normally? I plug it in. So obviously, there is no discussion there. And in the same token, limit of x to the nth power as x approaches a, I just plug it in like that a to the nth power. And of course, it's the same thing with limit as x approaches a from the nth root of x. So this will be the nth root of a. So the last ones don't even have anything to do with the, with the conditions. And the first seven, they're just reinforcement, if you want. If this is such a simple example, just x, what is the limit? If this is 5, then I have 5 here. If this is 10, then I have 10 to the nth power. And of course, n is has to be a um, positive integer. If not, we have to assume that a is greater than 0. I would like to apply these limit laws. We basically apply them without even thinking. So. I'm going to open, let me share my screen, and I have this here, and I want to dot three, and we can choose together to work on some limits. Let's say we would like to pick from, evaluate the limit and justify, and so on and so forth. So from three, to 9, and also from 11 to whatever it is, 30 something, 34. So anything that catches your eye, there are so many different types. I am going to choose, or you are going to choose first. Okay, I want to start with uh, 19. 19 just caught my eye. And then I'll let you go back and in the meantime, you can check. You can choose anything. So limit as t approaches 3 from either side, t to the third minus 27 over t squared minus 9. You'll see in a moment why I chose this. Two things before we start. So don't even look at it just yet. You can copy it, of course, but don't look at it just yet. I just want to... Um, refresh, I mean, explain one thing. So whenever we are asked to find the limit of a polynomial, any degree, let's call it f of x, as x approaches a, the answer will always be f of a. No problem. Again, you can say, explain why 
you're plugging in A when you shouldn't. You already told us that this means that P and Q are not the same. So this is, sorry, this is P and this is Q. When you bring Q, you're not overlapping, which means X cannot equal A. You already told us many times. How come that you take the liberty to plug in here and get F of A? Because polynomial functions are what we call continuous smooth functions. At any point on a polynomial function, at any point, the function from the left, the tendency from the left, the tendency from the right, will equal the function value at that point because of the polynomial, how they behave. Always smooth, continuous functions. So this is one thing that we need to remember. The limit of a polynomial is simply plugging in this number in the function. Same idea when we have the limit as x approaches a from a rational function. Let's call it also f of x. So I will have f of a. But there is a big if here, which I did not have for the polynomial. Can anyone tell us why? I have a big if, and I did not have it before for polynomials. If what? What can happen to a polynomial that can never happen to a, I'm sorry, what can happen to a rational function that can never happen to a polynomial? Anyone? Is it negative? Negative is, is possible. Never, negative exists. We don't like it, maybe, but that's not the issue ever. There is something else that could be a problem with rational functions. The denominator equals zero. Exactly. As long as if A is in the domain of f of x. In other words, if a makes the denominator zero, this is undefined. Excellent. Who said that? That was me. Kate. Thank you. So that's what happens to rational functions. Okay? They may be undefined, which never happens here. They may be undefined. When is a rational function undefined? When its denominator is zero. So if this number is in the domain of f of x, then I'm done. If it is not in the domain of f of x, I cannot do this. So this is the theorem, including this condition. So polynomials, nice. Rational, only if this number is in the domain so that I can get a number. But if it's not in the domain, I will not get a number. And may, the limit may not, be, may, may not exist, right? There are situations in, in which I could simplify. So I don't know. I have to analyze case by case. OK. So now, with this information, I like to, this is how lazy people do it, I like to, but unfortunately, I have to write it again, I think. I should. So limit as t approaches 3 from either side, t to the third minus 27 divided by t squared minus 9. OK. So please keep this in mind. This is number 1, and this is number 2. In very important. Very important, both of them. And number 3 will follow here. Very important in a moment. OK. So we're calculating the limit. What do we have to do first? Always. Every time we calculate a limit, we have to do something first. What is that? Always. No matter what it is. Plug it in. Yes. Thank you. The reason why we plug it in, and again you can say, you just told us not to. Yes. But we have to know what type of limit we have. 
We don't have to write it, but we will have to plug it in to see maybe it's this, because this is a rational function. Maybe I plug it in and I get 5, and I'm done, and move on. So can anyone plug it in and tell me where the numerator is going? What is the tendency of the numerator when t is 3? It's, it comes 0 divided by 0. Oh, nice. So there is hope. So there is hope. We don't know. But hope exists. Fine. Now, here's an, another very important concept <clears throat> that I want you to remember. When, let's say this is a polynomial, because it is. The numerator is a polynomial. The denominator is a polynomial. When p of a is 0, so this is a polynomial, this function, if you want, is 0, then x minus a is a factor of p of x. This is the factor theorem from pre-calculus. So we plugged in 3 here. Because we plugged in 3 and we got 0, x minus 3 is a factor of the top. So I have limit as t approaches 3. t minus 3 has to be a factor. Because I plugged in 3 in here, in here, and I got 0, then t minus t, 3. So always remember, I can write when t approaches 3, I can write t minus 3 approaches 0. This is the same thing. When I tell you t approaches 3, I can also tell you t minus 3 approaches 0 is the same thing. I'm moving one term from one side to the other. When I move terms around from one to the other, uh, I have to change the sign. So this is t minus 3 and something else. Now, this is the easy part, and then I'll talk about this in a minute. Can anyone give us this quantity? So let me refresh your memory, or let me summarize. We plugged in 3 at the top when we got 0. Automatically, I know t minus 3 by the factor theorem. By the factor theorem, I know that t minus 3 is a factor here. I plug in 3 here, and I got 0. I know that t minus 3 is a factor here. Now I have to identify these two factors. Can anyone give us the easy one? And then I'll talk about the difficult one. Plus Very good. So this is in dt plus 3. I don't know if this is a good color. Maybe not. Good. So now let's figure out this. And I want to talk about the difference of cubes. Because in calculus, I expect my students to know. Difference of cubes a to the third minus b to the third. How do I know? t cubed is something cubed. 27 is something cubed, which is 3. So the formula for factoring this is a binomial times a trinomial. And it doesn't matter, really, if this is negative. Uh, that's not good. OK, we'll discuss the second one in a minute. So we always, if this has a difference, then the binomial will have a difference. This is the first term squared plus just the product of these two plus the second term squared. This is always positive. We should never even talk about it. But if we, we are factoring the sum, then this is the positive, and this is negative. We're not even, again, we're not talking about the last term. So it's either minus, minus, plus, or plus, plus, minus. So since we identify the a and b, can anyone construct this and tell us what to write in here? Anyone? t squared plus 3t plus 9. Excellent. Who was that? Thaddeus. Thank you. Plus 3t plus 9. 
So here's what Thaddeus did. He said, okay, I square this and I get t squared. I multiply these two and I give 3t. And remember, it has to be plus. Minus, minus, plus. If you put minus here, this is wrong. So minus, minus, plus. And then he squared 3 and he got 9. Great job. Next step, I'm going to use the triangle now. So please follow the triangle. At this point, I should write t does not equal 3. So I can simplify. There's no need. We already know. This is exactly what it says. t approaches 3. So I'm free to simplify these two. Please write 1 so that you don't think it's 0. So now what is left, limit as t approaches 3 from either side. The top is t squared plus 3t plus 9. And the denominator is t plus 3. At this point, now I want to emphasize this is very important. I started with the limit of this function. The limit operator stays with the function till I apply it. So this was the first step. This is the second step, which is basically I copied it. So this is the first step. This is the second step. This limit operator does not disappear because I did not apply it to the function yet. So I copy the limit operator and whatever is left from the simplified form or the simplified form of the function. Now I apply the limit operator and this is the last step of the problem and this is when the limit operator disappears. What do I write? Anyone? Do we have an answer? Can anyone plug in? Twenty-seven over six. And we simplify by three and we get nine halves. Done. Excellent. Thank you.